How about you? Huh? No, you. Oh, oh. Jesus. <laughs> Shut up. Um, Stop molesting my trash can. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Room 6, a channel dedicated to the local Las Vegas music scene and the people that make it, including me. I'm Josh, and today I am very happy to welcome Pariah Was One. Wait a minute. Something's not right. Movie magic! So guys, welcome to my house. Introduce yourselves. I'm Calvin. I do vocals. I'm Kevin. <laughs> I do guitar. I'm Glenn. I do drums. I'm Nor. I also play guitar. And Oscar's not here. He plays bass. <laughs> I'm standing in for Oscar today. <laughs> 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 All right, cool. Um, welcome, guys. I'm glad that I was able to get you in here. Um, actually, ran into you at Vamp with Lacey Ferguson. Shout out LF Audio. And uh, glad that we uh, got this finally done. So, you guys have a new album out, correct? Yeah. Yep. A home we've never seen. Debut album. <laughs> so. Ta -da. I'll put a nice, actual, pretty picture up. And uh, this, uh, you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven songs. Any bonus tracks? There's, Maybe. There, there is. You a, guys have to listen, right? Oh, are we not telling them? <laughs> Let's not tell them. Shh. <laughs> 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 Interview's going great. So, <laughs> I told you it was going to be like this. We're off to a good start. You did. You warned me. You wanted the instructions done right. You should have wrote it on the girls. <laughs> it's, first of all, it's written. <laughs> I'm a dad. Um, I'm gonna go to those charter schools. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! You have charter schools for adults? That'd be awesome. Oh yeah. What, what is well, they do. magnet school? A uh, uh, lot more expensive. <laughs> That's where she's going. Oh. That's what I keep telling my wife. <laughs> Uh, Getting back to music, <laughs> um, how long have you each been in Vegas? Oh, I've been here since uh, about five years old, and I'll be 35 in December, so a long time. <laughs> <laughs> That's 30 years. <laughs> I've been here since uh, 05. Yeah. This sounds like there's a story, like a oh, real there, there's dark a story. story. So this, it all started in third grade when I cheated on my first test. Don't do it, people at home. Yeah, let's not even go don't, there. Don't <laughs> come here long expecting things right? to work out because I won't. Anyway, <laughs> so 05, 19, 15, 14, 15, 15. I don't know. I'm going to say all of those just in case. That's right. Where, where'd you move from, if I may ask? Atlanta, Georgia. Hot Atlanta! Yes. And before that, Brooklyn. Wow. Bit of a culture shock. Well, that's where I was born. Oh, okay. But at least the heat here is drier, right? Than the hot Atlanta. It's a lot better here. Yeah. I, uh, I, just, I spent a week... I came for the hookers, I stayed for the weather. There you go. <laughs> I spent a week in South Carolina in, in, in July, and I was just like... I it's thought, not worth it. I thought I knew. Who does this? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hey, you. I love wet. I love my job. Thanks for flying me out there and paying for everything. I appreciate it. But y'all crazy. Yeah, so it's been about 20 years since I lived in Las Vegas. But you're 20 years was, old. <laughs> since I was seven. <laughs> oh. And then I was originally from uh, Los Angeles, California. You've been 20 years old since you were seven? Yes. <laughs> yeah. I'm working on the same trick. <laughs> oh, man. How about you, Lenore? 1996, born and raised here. Dog. That's the problem! <laughs> Shut up. If I had known this entire time, we could have went at every one of our problems differently. <laughs> this explains so much. He, 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 he's known that. I, don't, I, don't I, know. I did not know that. Yes, you knew that. I don't remember the Children, geez, Hey, man. hey, don't make me turn this kitchen around. I'll do it. <laughs> All right. How long? Um, I, I, I know this answer already because I kind of, you know, no, no. feel deep dive. But for the, for the peoples at home that maybe don't know you and just decide to click on the video, thanks. Um, how long have you been? Pariah was one. Uh, officially, uh, two years. years. Yeah, Plus. I, we, yeah, we started. Me and Go me on. and Kevin and Glenn first jammed together in September of two thousand seventeen. I, I have it on video, but uh, nice. we uh, 
we we officially you know came out of the closet December of 2018. Nobody was wearing <laughs> pants. It was weird. It's not. I got tired of hanging around in the closet. You <laughs> see, uh, <laughs> there wasn't much room. Nice. So, uh, we took there. our shenanigans to the beauty bar. Shenanigans, <laughs> right? All right. Um, can I get you guys actually to kind of corral around me? I'm tired of doing the, the, the turn, the turn, the turn and face. Oh, we got you, man. I'll come back here. <laughs> so, now how long have you been um, each doing music? Like, like in general? Yeah, just how long you've been doing? Where um, you basically picked up an instrument or, or decided, you know what, I want to try make, doing music. Well, I was originally uh, joined a, a middle school band, and then from there, you know, then I got Little into band. got into guitar, you know, around my uh, high school days. Yeah, I just continue ever since. About 15 years now. Nice. Yep. Cool. I've pretended to be a singer since <laughs> I was like uh, five years old. But uh, so many uh, middle school, so many I uh, played percussion in band. Uh, oh, wow. And then um, I've attempted several other instruments since then. But I didn't like get into actual bands until oh, wow, I was about 24. <clears throat> right on. But you had a lot of that. Um, experience playing in front of people already. Yeah, growing up there, so that's good. But I still have this like anxiety thing. It's funny you say that. Yeah, I am um, working on a video right now about stage fright. Yeah, it is surprising the amount of famous names that have come out saying like you know, oh, I every every performance, every performance, and you're like, but you're internationally known. And on the microphone, two decades. Oh. I freak out before every. Yeah, me too. Show. I freak out before every one of these. Especially the solo ones, because it's just me. Yeah, I got nobody else talking, except maybe the cars driving by. But anyway, I can introduce, I can introduce you to a person that will give you some uh, some things that will take care of that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Enough about Boulder Highway. How about you, Nora? How long have you been doing this? Crazy. <clears throat> I think it's been like thirteen years, man. Maybe fifteen. Kind of the same story with Kevin. Um, what did you say? High school. No, I, school school, school. Yeah, middle school, middle school band class. Yeah, beat that. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I played, I played a uh, percussion, so like uh, the bells and then marimba. But it was every day after school was let's go play Rage Against the Machine, you know, in my friend's bedroom and just play and drink that's soda all night, you know. And that's what it was called, huh? It, that's just that's what we did, that's, man. We kicked it and we we jammed on like <clears throat> I had like a four string ukulele wannabe guitar and it was like who cares let's learn testify on it and just like fucking rage in the room you know <laughs> we're nice. all kids you know nice. so it didn't yeah. really matter to us you must be happy that they're yeah. uh, supposedly coming back together oh yeah them. yes it's yes fun. very very oh yeah since this is good timing very fucking excited about that man i, 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 was I, I would like to see it to believe it but uh right. yeah and they're having tryouts for drums it's very funny the rest of the year <laughs> well not well, not to throw any shade at rage against the machine but uh i actually used to uh so go. the very first kind of musical thing I did with another person, his roommate, and he used to go to uh, St. Thomas Aquinas with Zach, lead singer of um, Rage Against the Machine. Where is he at? <laughs> <laughs> your friend. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Brett, if you're watching, please reach out to me because I have no idea where you are. I have tried to find you and say, hey, what's up? That's why we're here. I'm not really. going to say your last name because I don't want to do that to you. But um, anyway, he told me how he went to high school with him and apparently, he misses you very, very much, Brett. I do. <laughs> I'm sorry I broke you through time. <laughs> huh? anyway, but okay. getting back to my story, Zach, so apparently Zach was a huge preppy back then. Oh, oh like, what happened? Well, you know, you well, know, he wore the collar up in, and everything. In order for him to be able, uh, yes, you must know that to speak about some of these things, you have to, you have to, you have to part of it. Yeah, but in order to rage against I just, the machine, how was that, Zach? Did I do that right? <laughs> Zach, I got you right. Machine. Yeah, <laughs> it's all about greases and socias. <laughs> yes, boy, boy. Oh, he's waiting for a flood. How about you, laughing boy? I don't even. Well, um, he doesn't even know. Well, um, what, what was the question? Well, <laughs> I'm still was was concerned that Zach's going to hear this, and he's going to be so upset with it. <laughs> no, he's, he's not. <laughs> you, music. Come on. Oh, um, since I was uh 14, 14 years old. Yeah. What'd you start on? Um, drums. I don't know. Um, playing in the air, and and then uh, eventually when hitting that. Uh, when my Bill dad Collins. got his taxes, yeah. I was still playing in the air. I don't know. <laughs> but, um, yeah. He's actually a very good guitar player. Now they got drumsticks, you can yeah. play in the air. You know yeah. what? I, I was I was hoping that um, hit sticks would not take off, but they did. 
Uh, <laughs> all right. Yeah, well, technology. moving from what, you know, that, mm. what were your early uh, musical influences as in who did you listen to or what style of music did you listen to that got you thinking, I want to do that or I want to learn to play that? I got this one. <laughs> it's, it's not a great, you're not being great, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Pee Wee Herman. <laughs> Really, is a good musician. You guys don't know this, but I've seen YouTube videos. Well, it's where true. It's Paul Rubin. Paul he, Rubin. Yeah. He's a dope ass musician. Yep. And, you know, I thought to myself when I used to watch uh, the Playhouse with Pee Wee. Uh, yep. Uh, uh, oh man, that's, that was a different story. Not <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Not appropriate. <laughs> Not appropriate. Not appropriate. Have you seen these videos? <laughs> I think we're holding back, honestly. Uh, unless it's something that's actionable. But no, even if it's actionable, go for it. Um, the views expressed by the so, guests on Room 6 are not necessarily views expressed by the host. <laughs> but my father, um, his brother um, had passed away. But prior to um, like this, he was an um, excellent um, guitar player. And one of his... Early students was uh, CC Deville from Poison. Nice, nice. and uh, it was that it was those stories and and the inspiration of you know how he just kept on you know going from one band to another and kept on playing and playing and playing. Yeah, he and, did bounce, didn't he? And then eventually he met the guys that were in Poison mm -hmm. in Pennsylvania, I believe, and then they they, they, they all you know they were like, well, we have a sound, let's go out to LA, and they went to LA, and now they're Poison. Poison or Pennsylvania boys? Yeah. I had no I idea. And Brooklyn. Oh, yeah, Brooklyn. Of course. C.C. DeVille. Nice. I used to call him, uh, uh, Bruce, you know, his name might actually be Bruce. <laughs> okay. Uh, Looking for you too, dog. Early, early music. I'd like to swap some stories. Who's next? Um... I uh, used to watch Headbangers Ball with my little, my, well, not my little brother, my older brother when yes. I was little. Um, with with like Adam, the, with the original uh, 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 Ricky, Ricky Rockman. Mm. Yes, um, Ricky Rockman. So I used to. Uh, my early influences were very much like Kiss and Poison, Motley Crue. Um, like I just remember the first time. I saw the I Love It Loud video for uh, from Kiss, and it's just the way that it starts with the drum beat, mm -hmm. and then it zooms in on the TV, and you see Gene Simmons, and I just knew that that was it. And then, of course, I fell in love with Guns N' Roses, <clears throat> and I would put my bandana on my room and use a <laughs> yeah, and then use a baseball Who bat as a microphone. So like I uh, I knew I knew uh, then that like I really wanted to do it, but you know by the time you get to high school, there's things like drugs and girls and ah, uh, so that's why oh, boys. Late, that's why I was a late starter. <laughs> None of those things happened to me in high school, but that was early. Honestly, early. Knew Patrick Swayze, early. another really good musician. <laughs> that and uh, well, Disney Disney movies. <laughs> Disney, Disney movies. movies. Yeah, she, she's like she's yeah, he sang. What? Man, <laughs> not a lot of people know that Patrick Swayze actually sang. She's like the wind from Dirty Dancing. And, to this day, one of my early heroes. <laughs> Except for the whole, <clears throat> he doesn't play drums or anything. But you know, yeah, he knocks down the. How about you, Kevin? Uh, so yeah, it's all started uh, with my brother introducing me to all dope, all kinds of bands. All dope. <laughs> <laughs> Good dope. Well, yeah, here cut that off. <laughs> <laughs> nope. So <laughs> no, dope is dope. That's fine. Dope's a good band. Dope's yeah, wow. so, yeah. like dope. Yeah, all right. So again, my brother, he introduced me. <laughs> Who is a bass player? He, uh, He's in our band. So, yeah. <laughs> but he plays a bass. He's oh, he's the not here. <laughs> yeah, he's the not here. Yeah. Oscar. Oh. So yeah, like he introduced me a lot of awesome bands like uh, Rage Against Machine, uh, Nirvana, Black Sabbath. So I s first started off on bass because uh, just by watching Geezer. Only a switch and a uh, basis from Rage Against Machine, I was like, damn, this is tight as fuck. He's so tall, so, too. So, yeah, and then once I uh, discovered Pantera, that's when I started playing guitar. That's when I shaved my head. Like, oh, boy. Back. Yeah. Like, far beyond driven. That's who you remind me of. I've been pushing that look since it, since it came out, dog. Wow. <laughs> as soon as I saw Phil, I was like, that's it. I got it. No more fucking shampoo. No more conditioner. Because <laughs> I used to have long hair. You know what I mean? Like, really, nice, like, beautiful, beautiful yeah. long hair. You know what I mean? And fucking fuck that. I, yeah. Uh, that's quite the pain. No, no. 
Um, kind of the same. Sorry, well, Uh, well, you know, then also I've been going through different phases of music. It was the rape, you know, from Rage Against Machine, Black Sabbath, and then from there, uh, Disturb, Slipknot, all that, ghost? and then all the modern stuff, modern me- metal. So. Who's here? I'm listening, listening to you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to figure out if your dog just farted, but no, no, no. <laughs> something, something, Slipknot. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. a presence in the room. I guess. Oh yeah. no. Yeah. I think I think she just uh, we have invoked you into the She heard the joke. She heard the rape joke, and immediately was like, "Not cool, bro." <laughs> 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 the dog is very there are different levels of rape. <laughs> Okay, uh, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't blow up the comments. <laughs> you can gonna, blow up. You can blow up my page uh, for that. Yes. It's fine. How are we gonna get famous? You know? <laughs> Not, we must well, really start me, controversy. <laughs> uh, like I said, man, it's kind of the same. Like I said, when I was a kid, Rage Against Machine was something we bumped every day after school right. when we jammed it. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> I played guitar, not really seriously, like, you know, like I said, it was a four-string ukulele, this is not really a guitar. Uh, I played drums for about 10 years, man, and while playing drums and listening to drums on albums, the stuff that stuck out was like Seven Dust, uh, August Burns Red, As Blood Runs Black, those were the bands where I was like, okay, they're not holding down a fat backbeat. They're really progressing with the song, with the notes, with the music. And it changed my world, man. Like, as a drummer and musically, it really changed everything. And, uh, you know, if we're going to do shout outs, uh, shout out to, uh, Matt Griner and Travis Orban because they're both drummers that have really affected me as a drummer and now a guitarist. Like, it, it's crazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I looked at the camera while I said their names. Well, <laughs> well, you, guys you did good. You did good. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah. cool. Uh, moving from earliest musical influences, current musical influences. What are you listening to now that gets you jazzed, gets you going? Oh jeez. Or makes you think I need to start right. I need to get back to writing music or whatever. Hell, that's everything, dude. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, I can't restrict. If, if you I listen taste. to what what's out there right now, then you you kind of like fuck. I better get in there. Yeah, yeah it's, it's music. All this is yeah, it's all good. It's all good, man. Yeah. Yep. North Lane and Gideon back to back. I'm like, Lane. fuck, yeah. Dude, they're there are a few fucking on fire. As a singer songwriter, there are a few musicians that every time I hear them, what even if it's a song that's twenty years old, I hear them like. I really need to get back to writing music. I really need to work on a new instrument. Sting, Dolly Parton plays like nine instruments. You know, these yeah, are yeah. these are bosses. Yeah, 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 for reason. Reason. yeah, yeah. But but they're but also you know um, just a lot of you, you go see a live maybe a, a live show for a particular band and you see another band and you're like, what am I doing with my instrument? <laughs> I was at a Dolly Parton show where she just straight up punched the dude for not like having all his parts yeah. in order, dude. <laughs> Uh, no, it influences are like I'm big into Billie Eilish and 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 right now we were just listening to her this morning. Yeah, I, yeah. I think she's an absolute like artist. Uh, I'm a huge like Lady Gaga fan. Um, but then like I get on like I'm like Tool's my favorite band in the world. See, yeah. you yeah, think yeah, you know? Right, right. Yeah, metal so bands they, like like, like the, the the Lady Gaga and the Billie oh, Eilish I, too. I love that stuff. Like and I'm a country fan. Song. Like you? Do, no, wait, country or western? Huh? Uh, cut like. Country like I'm Hank Williams and okay, and, uh, and and I'm not one of those like oh it's only got to be like old country like no give me some George Strait some Alex Jackson and and you know like, I grew up on uh, Kenny Rogers Crystal Gale you know um I uh, Will, Willie Nelson with uh, Julio Iglesias Johnny Paycheck you know to all the girls I loved before uh, <laughs> but, but then you know on on the other side like I'm hugely Did you say, uh, what, did you say Johnny? Johnny Paycheck. He did. I, I have no idea who that is. Well, he's just taken. Yeah, okay. he's got That's why I like doing this show. Years and years and years. That's why I like doing this show. Um, I hear musicians and I'm like, yeah, right. check him out. Okay, I gotta check him out. Johnny um, Paycheck. And then, uh, like, my good friend Aaron from Gemini Syndrome. I met him because I'm such a huge fan of Gemini Syndrome. Yeah. Um, I think it's Tesseract. Like, I love Daniel Tompkins' vocals. Uh, just. It, Low pro, like I'm, I'm all over the place. Like um, I just love music, and all of it is a big inspiration. So. It's just a very, it is. It, it, very it's to me one of the best things. Yeah. Yes, 
Close. That's right. From well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one of the one of the best things about <laughs> live music in general is you can discover something you weren't even looking for and be like, "This is now one of my favorite bands," or yeah. "This is I really like this. I'm going to use this to you know write a new song without copying." But then there's nothing sadder when you also hear somebody just a train wreck. And you're just like, oh, oh, guys, you shouldn't have put that in the set. No, you weren't ready. <laughs> you weren't ready. <laughs> I'm a firm, like, you You got to be, uh, because music, music is so subjective, I try to, to chill out. I, like, I, I do, try. Yeah, I don't yeah. always. I try I to step back and say, uh, what are they trying to succeed, do here? But sometimes but, somebody's out of tune. <laughs> but I try to be like, yeah. I try to avoid being like, yeah, this is trash. Because as long mm. as it moves somebody somewhere, then it's doing its job. But yeah. every once in a while I slip and I'm just like. Yeah. Or if they're having fun. <sighs> it's true. I want, that brings an important point, especially with the metal scene, but just music in general. So many people have this misconception that metal bands or just hard rock bands are full of hate and anger and our music's the best and your sucks and period. And no, if anything, it's their fans. I'm depressed. I like that. <laughs> yeah. Most of them take a number, pal. <laughs> I love scotch. Scotchy, scotch, scotch. <laughs> what I've noticed in, in, in uh, over time is that um, you have like uh, uh, a lot of bands trying, or not trying to, but like they're their um, intention is to uh, um, try to break the frontier as far as what humans are able to do on the instrument. You know what I'm saying? Like they're, they're right. going a lot faster. They're going a lot smoother. They're going a lot more in depth. They're doing more scales. Doing, you know what I'm saying? It's just like you can totally tell that, you know, it's, it's, it's a whole lot of work to run through the song, even as... Right, the audience. The audience is listening like you know, like this. Like, did you hear that? What did he just do that? You know what I'm yeah. Saying? And, and, <laughs> yeah. Um, and then there's you know, like the other side that is you know is more um, um, expressive. But in general, in metal, you have a lot more of the trying to evolve. You know, the yeah. whole thing forward, kind of a and stand out too. Yeah, because it, it, the metal scene is so. Uh, Diversified, yes. It can get muddied if you're not like it, it, so many bands are trying to find like this is this is our genre, this is our our niche. Where other bands are like, no, we're gonna pick cherry pick and you know and, yeah. And I, I've seen reviews of you guys actually that say you know you, you all over the map. Yeah, you you pick a lot of different. <laughs> um, and and I wouldn't go so far as to say progressive metal necessarily, unless you that's what you think you are. I kind of think we're progressive, but progressively, I think you're pro pro I think you're progressive metal in that um, you're not sticking to we are this right. Yeah, Phil and Soma once said you when you know when you're in a band you steal twenty of your favorite band's sound and that's oh, how you get your own general. sound. All music is thievery. Yeah. All music is thievery. Is. <laughs> yeah. That's how you get your sound. No, there's so. nothing original anymore. It's just, can you do it better than the last guy? It, it is for this reason. Mm -hmm. um, I stopped pretty much listening to newer, newer music mm -hmm. years ago. Um, I listened to Led Zeppelin and 311, and, you know, and I pretty much just kind of in that in that area. Don't believe that's, that's fun. <laughs> fun fact: a lot of the drums on that album are inspired by Three Eleven. We just <laughs> stole it right off the album. We <laughs> stole it right off the album. Like, uh, I'm just saying, you know, um, it's, it's, it's because if if you do listen to everything that is, that is brand new, you cannot help yourself from from being influenced. Oh yeah, no, I'm saying by them, and it isn't say that like I don't listen to anybody brand new, but I'm, I'm saying like on rotation religiously, you know what I'm saying, where it's always playing in the background. You know, right. It's the older bands, the ones that like I started with, like Pantera and you know. Are you guys like me where you don't listen to your music that much? No, I listen to my music. I actually listen to my music. Yeah. Okay. I, 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 I mean I listen to it obsessively <laughs> until I'm decided, okay, I'm stepping away. I'm done. Done tweaking, done whatever. And and that's it. But then I you know, I I I've got a, an album out that's it's over a decade old. I don't go back and listen to it that often. I unless I need to refresh because I I'm gonna play a song. That I, maybe I forgot the, the bridge or something. Well, not to be a dick, but when I'm writing, I'm not oh, really worried about who's listening. Yeah, I'm like I'm worried about do I like this? Yep. Yeah. If mm -hmm. I don't, if I don't like it and I can't listen to it, then what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> not to be a dick, but isn't that like the whole statement is just a dick thing to say? It is. <laughs> not to be a dick, but no, fuck I'm you guys. <laughs> I'm not racist, but yeah. you're racist. You're about to say something racist. Um, but new musicians, that's actually really important. It's not being a dick. It's not being selfish or, or egotistical to, to 
write what you like. Depends on who you talk to. This, <laughs> this is my opinion. <laughs> my damn show. His so, dick. This is a mini sound bite. <laughs> uh, it, it's it really matters if you don't like it. Your audience, you're not going to have fun playing it, and your it's audience true. is going right. to pick up on that. There's nothing worse than seeing a band that is just dead eyed, or worse, you know, yeah. You you can see like oh it's Fleetwood Mac and <laughs> you're about to hate each other. His, <laughs> his soul is crushed. I can see it in his face. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Casino. Man. Anyway, um, current influences. Who did we not get? We didn't get either of you guys, right? <clears throat> oh, who are you listening to right now? I'm sure you guys have a so probably. Wow. <laughs> yeah, mainly uh well, that my, sounds uh, like that's like a great super band, we should go seven dust. <laughs> <laughs> Ta -da! Oh yeah, seven dust is fucking awesome. Yeah, Maya, Maya, we both Maya, Maya, Maya. Sugar, Periphery. Uh I listen to a lot of bad wolves too. Nice sir. Hey, awesome. how do you like Bear Barefoot? Beartooth? Beartooth? That's a awesome. I just combined no, Beartooth and Bigfoot. Beartooth. Someone's about to get sued. Fucking killer, dude. Yeah. Uh, killer. I, I discovered them with some some Spotify... Uh, sponsor me. Some Spotify <laughs> workout heavy rock play, playlist. And I was just like, this makes me want to lift heavy things. Yeah! <laughs> All right. Um, we're on to that most hated of... Uh, Interview questions. I, uh, I actually did an episode in it. Click, link here. Uh, how do you define your musical style? Elevator pitch time. Meshuggah Seven Dust. Yes. Ooh, there seven you go. Dust. Uh, that's, that's, up, that's the one. That's it's the one over. We sell Next the most. Question. Yeah. That's, that's Next the one that, question, that we bro. push the most. But uh, yeah. I feel like there's more influence of other stuff yeah. in there as well. Like it's a lot it's of like, cool. It's like spicing some mm. tool and some death tone. Yeah. Andromeda is such like a death tone. Fucking enchilada, yeah. dude. <laughs> so would you say like a open-minded progressive metal? Yeah. Um, All the I, shit that was really good in the 90s, that's us. I would say... Uh, <laughs> you should listen to Tyrants by Night. <laughs> I would say that our genre is erratic. <laughs> Actually, that's in your that's in your about blurb. It's, yeah. it, it, it's erratic. It's directed, just to correct them. <laughs> yes. Um, you guys just recently did a, a show with... Black Dolly Murder. Black Dolly Murder. Thank you. I was like, I'm forgetting a word. And it's, it's I'm black sure something. that's the show you were talking yes, about. Yes, the Black Dolly Murder. <clears throat> which apparently went off. I... I Unfortunately, didn't know, didn't hear about it. So. Yeah, that show was fucking awesome. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah. It, it originally was supposed to be in, the, the, in like, the Triple B's room. Yeah, told you. Well, it was originally, and then the <laughs> Triple B room sold out. So they were like, "Well, wow, we just keep pushing these because now we're going to move yeah. into the Fremont stage." Oh man, I got to say something about that. I've been going backstage for <laughs> years since I mean since, <laughs> since 2005. <laughs> Please, feel free. I did not know that there was another fucking side of that building. Yeah, yeah, hey, yeah. same here. That oh, same here too. Yeah, yeah, you know, there's like I've been loading like... drums into that same room. <laughs> yeah, did not know that if you open that door, it went into a whole other fucking club. What's that about? <laughs> yeah, that's the big one. <laughs> it was a, it was a fun night. Yeah, it was like yeah. the once what I thought was a bathroom normal. This is an like, elevator. No, well, Where yeah, the, the elevator, the elevator, and the Where stairs. Where the fuck does the elevator go? The stairs to Fremont. I was like, oh, <laughs> it was, I've been there the whole. Time. It was now, I have not been in that. Sorry, to cut you off, but I haven't been in the big one, in no. the big one yet. Um, I, I've only I've formed there once. But it's fucking it nice in there, man. It's nice. It's nice. It's nice in there. <laughs> you, you were gonna say? Oh, it, it was a killer show. Uh, I but I mean, with some of the <laughs> the bands we were with, uh, I'll be honest. I, I you know my freak out was even bigger than usual because we were the only band with clean vocals. So I was worried <laughs> that like I was worried that it was gonna be like, what the fuck are these yeah, motherfuckers it, doing? But we that's gave, the thing. Uh, we brought it. We went to the hard People were into it. You know, I saw heads moving. We yeah. yeah. The only yeah. the only thing about swearing in in your performance. Is you're trying to convey emotion and intensity, and if you can do it without swearing, intentionally or unintentionally, good on you. I I, I don't do it unintentionally. I, I think I right. talk a lot of shit between, you know, I see, cuss between, but you know, largely the lyrics still have. See, my thing is, I have an 84 year old mother, and I, she listens to my stuff. So the worst I put out there is like, damn or hell. Sorry, mom. Um, but uh, you know, also I don't do metal. So well, there's well, that. You can. You can say cunt in fucking folk music. <laughs> Which would be hilarious! <laughs> Come on, Willie Nelson! <laughs> I mean, it Speaking really... Speaking of which... This, this is interesting. <laughs> we just played at the Whiskey in uh, Hollywood, and one of the bands that was on there was um, a group called... Cunt Spit. Cunt Spit. And nice. um, what was interesting 
about that is that they were supposed to play in Las Vegas, and Las Vegas would not have it because of the name. Sin City, y'all. The hell? And I was, yeah. th- I was well, thinking I myself. You're saying the dive bar wouldn't take him? I know. The I'm not expecting that he's the box. But, 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 but also, I, I just wanted to say that that we still have class out here. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We got Boulder class. Highway, up, bitches. We have Boulder class. Highway. Here we go. <laughs> class out the ass, yo. <laughs> you want some evil pie. Spit? Evil pies had Spaghetti's cock. Come on. You want some cunt spit with your gust jerky? <laughs> <laughs> I, I used to have a I used to have a shirt called Ghetto Ghetto Shice. That's like seven STDs in one. That's hey, fucking horrible. Awesome people. They were all, they were all, all really nice. Yeah. But when they told me that, I was like, Vegas said no to Cunspit. <laughs> That's crazy. Well, I mean, they're not going to be they're Chris. not going to be on the radio, are they? Yeah. yeah. Well, probably <laughs> or, or or the marquee. Okay. Yeah. 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 All right. Um, as a band now, musical goals. What's your next thing? Like, you played the big room at Triple B, <laughs> unintentionally. I know where we go from here. Musical goals or like live events what? kind of goals? <laughs> yes. What music? Like what? What is on that horizon? What, what's your next thing you're pushing for? We're gonna figure out how oh. to make Kevin and Nor work nice together. <laughs> That's one of them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> definitely one of them. As far as live shows go, um, we I've booked a lot of big shows for us over the year. Matching guitars, I'm thinking. Nice. Uh, Matching guitars? Matching guitars. That's spin. Then you guys go, top. bro, don't you suspect the matching guitar? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. We, uh, I mean, we, we played, uh, <laughs> we booked Whiskey and Go-Go. I booked uh, Black Dahlia Murder Show. We got Cattle Decapitation coming up. Yes, I did We got that. Head P.E. December 3rd. Cattle Decapitation? Yeah. Sure. yeah. And, uh, Why so, because it's, it's, it's a big it's, show. It's Cattle uh, Decap. They've kind of got a fall. Yeah. 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 Yes, oh, yes. Oh. No, we're not. I'm not yeah. taking heads off. Uh, uh, this is, actually leads me to my next show. What is? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking animal. <laughs> <laughs> It's always the- <laughs> well, I got to ask these questions, man, because, you know, their fans like, you I know, cut no it's always the drum. heads off. What's funny is they're vegan. They are. Whatever. Really? Yeah. That's a... That makes their name even better. <laughs> um, question though, what's the next show? Is that the Count of The no, December third. Where December. no animals will be harmed. Yeah, right? with Happy December third and Bullhead. Lazy Harry's. Yeah. Fuck. Lazy Harry's. We have no idea. Bullhead. Do we? December third with Head PE. Yeah. What he said. So, uh, links will links to everything will be down in the doobie doo. With Head PE. Yeah. yeah. Fucking A. You knew about yeah, this. Yeah, bro. <laughs> All right. I think you didn't know, bro. Hi. Awesome. Welcome <laughs> to the show, pal. <laughs> uh, Good I morning. About it as I was booking it. That is actually one of the influences. Uh, as far as, I mean, like, goals, as, as far as me goes, I, you know, I just want to make more music and... Yeah. That's it. Right on. That's so all. I, I have low expectations. Low expect. I, I oh, no. tend to not be disappointed. To some, to some people, that is a huge expectation. <laughs> I just want to make music. Maybe, you know, making a living doing what you love would be nice. No, no. It would be. We definitely don't want to do that. <laughs> Which is a great time to tell you, uh, by the way, down in the description is a link to my Patreon page. And a GoFundMe. And no, not a GoFundMe. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck GoFundMe. But no, um... <laughs> I, I actually have four tiers in there, which will give you some cool perks. But also, any support, financial support to this channel will allow me to do things like put on a showcase of all the people that I've interviewed and actually pay the bands. How about that? Mm. Or I don't need you paid. Yeah. Or I don't, <laughs> don't know. Don't universe. <laughs> buy better cameras and better audio equipment. Uh, or I don't know. Maybe um, more liquor. More liquor, because it gets, it gets expensive. Well, putting if you on cry the more services. than four tears, man. I mean, I, I put out a lot more than when you know. When you I'm put selling. out a lot, yeah. yeah. Anyway, <laughs> um, seriously though, if you want to support the content you like, please consider clicking either the Patreon link down below in the description or buy a CD. How about that? I've got links down there too. Buy one of their CDs, but that doesn't go yet. So moving on. Favorite Robot. show as a band. Favorite show memory. Probably for me it was Bullhead City in February with uh with uh, whoever I can't even remember, but uh, that was a that was a really fun show for me. Kira, it was with Kira, Fatal Malady, and uh, Kira played that. Yeah, no uh, shit. Braced for Impact, and I think there was another. What made it so fun? That's right, Braced for Impact. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, What what made it so fun and memorable was the crowd, or was um, after somebody go to jail? Or yeah, was afterwards, we all did a bunch of drugs, but the, the photographer was so, pretty cool. I've been playing drums for 10 years, and December 28th, 
2018 was my first show as a live guitarist. Shout out to Fred. Ever. Ever. Shout out to who? Fred. Yes, shout out to Fred. Can't get any more ledge <laughs> than Fred's got. <laughs> Fred Morledge, <laughs> photofm.com. Exactly. Nice. That was that was uh that was the first time I played out of state and that was the first time I played out of state as a guitarist. It was, it was all new to me, man, and it was a uh, it was one hell of a show. I was a long drive. It was raining. It was just a really nice, really nice uh, vibe. Fucking peanut time. butter burgers, man! Like the shit was whack, man. <laughs> Everything was great. Um, I'm sorry. Back up for a second. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Exactly. It's What's on a peanut butter burger? It's a burger peanut butter with, burger. with like you know. Uh, was there mayo on that? No. Instead of mayo, oh, I, I think they, they, I think they, they, they exactly. Butter. I think instead of mayo, they did they did like a really creamy peanut butter. Was this butter. at a restaurant or yeah? It was like, yeah, 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 sorry, yeah. It's this really say, damn, small you... divey place, but man, yeah, it's kind of divey. It's bit early, and I've, I've already done like a double scotch, so let me know. I was saying that he made peanut butter hamburgers. I was like, we I was know. just like, we had a little money. We could yeah, have no, I mean, really. like you know, a peanut <laughs> butter burger actually sounds amazing. I'm gonna try one next time. It was burgers. good, man. Like, after everything was done and done, and we had our uh, our gear loaded up. He came over with like sixty tater tots, and me and him got peanut yes! butter, and we were just <laughs> like trying everything. Oh god, tater, nothing you've said is is bad, especially like drinking rock peanut butter exactly. burger tater yeah. tots. Yeah, it was, nom, 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 nom. it was fucking great. You know, this yep. was my first time out of state. You know, anything about the show you liked? You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah it was, it was, <laughs> I played all the notes. <laughs> yeah, no, I was probably still fucked up, but it, it was a great show, man. You know, we had like he wore the rainbow 15, vest. fifteen people, twenty. Maybe no, 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 no. It was maybe like 30, yeah. maybe like fifteen up front and like all together. Like everybody, uh, yeah. everybody was at the nice. table. You know, they don't know what to do with us right away. You know <laughs> anybody else got a favorite show memory? Maybe you know somebody went to jail or, or something exploded. <laughs> or, <laughs> Why uh, somebody so, look at me? So no? far, we haven't. Uh, <laughs> so far, we haven't had too much chaos like that. You know, the most chaos we have is trying to wrangle him. To get to the show, <laughs> <laughs> or you know, before we go on, we have a small, where's Glenn? To be we fair, where's Glenn? To be fair, to be fair, he he wasn't the last one here today, so you know. So <laughs> uh, Kevin, technically, I've been never been late. late. Uh, I'll say Kingman was pretty fun. Never been late. Kingman, uh, Kingman, yeah, oh, Kingman, Kingman, yeah, my bad. Yeah, like oh man! The whole vibe, the crowd, like it's, yeah. a, it's a pretty small bar, but like just with you could tell the amount of yeah. crowds, so, like it really does. Sometimes like it's the best shows, yeah, yeah. It's a floor stage and all that, so like you really like. I you do get more with the crowd. I actually got into a mosh pit while playing. It was pretty cool. Nice. Oh, but, uh, Hit anybody? <laughs> with the, <laughs> yeah, with the take it easy on the guitar. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, he gave me the stock of his guitar. It was awesome. <laughs> We dressed up a little bit too, you yeah. know. I wore a three piece suit and then decided at the last minute to put black makeup on my face. And As you do? Yeah. Uh, and your skinhead, so. <laughs> and I'm cutting my. You know, I can't, you know, you don't realize how much you actually put Touch your hands your on your face. Oh, yeah. Until you look at the suit and it's got black streaks everywhere and you're like it's kind of like when you as soon as you realize I can't touch my face I'm never going to be able to live so much older half of these fuck fuck oh, shit I don't know, like I mean I, I I loved all of our out of state stuff but so far I think my favorite shows were what you probably the evil pie shows we did. We played evil pie. I was just going to mention it about evil pie because you're literally like, I'm here and here's the audience. Well, yeah. I mean that's the thing. It was so small, but both times it was just it was it Raw. was pretty yeah. packed, yeah. and it was I, I barely recognized anybody, and there were people that were into it, and that's that's yes. what I enjoy. The thing with evil pie is ten people, yeah. and it's it's already kind of full. Yeah, that's right. But it's like and those same people are here, now. but you know, you've yeah. got this whole area over here that's filled with people that are just like, oh yeah, and they're you know, they're yeah, I didn't come for a it. concert, but hey, all right, yeah. you know, they're getting into it and mm -hmm. touring pizza. And that that always, I'm thinking that that always makes a great show for me. Evil pie pizza is legit. It, it is, is legit. Even they were come on tour with us, we're totally down with you. Heard about the grasshopper? Yeah, I have. Yeah, which. For those of you not in a, in Vegas, I don't know why you're watching this, but hey, thank you. Um, we had a grasshopper swarm you may have heard about, a grasshopper infestation for a brief period of time. And Evil Pie said, they fuck it, we're going to make grasshopper pizza, which they sourced from Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. They did. They, 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 so they're not going to eat our own grasshoppers. Well, yeah, nobody's out there with a net. <laughs> it's like, who do, who I don't see why not, dude. I, I feel really like it would have been cheaper. Not, but, yeah. <laughs> because it was hard. It was cheaper, but you, you, <laughs> can't exactly, you can't exactly order a certain amount, you know. <laughs> All right. Um, everybody do their favorite uh, show memory? Yeah, cool. Yeah. You, from favorite show memory to favorite venue, which I think I know is, is Triple B's. I didn't do my favorite show memory. Oh, you didn't. Sorry. <laughs> it was, it was, it, it, I have it, been remiss. It was the first show. <laughs> first show. Yeah. 
I, I, oh, when he came out of the closet. Yeah. Yeah, right Beauty on. Bar. It, it, you know, I think... Um, Which, perfect place for that. Yeah. <laughs> um, Rest in R.I.P. We Beauty were bar. on a small break from um, um, Astoria 702, and, and uh, when I played the first show with these guys, I, you know, I realized then that it was real, like, like, like we had something happening here. You know what I mean? Right on. And uh, you, you really don't know until you do that. Yeah. Just, like, Rehearsal's one thing. thing. Yeah. Yeah, you have to see what's like on stage in, in, in the field. I think the crowd re- reacted like I had expected, like they didn't really know what to do with it. You know what I'm saying? And you know, Mr. Kevin here, um, that's a long time coming. This is like you know, his his project, his baby. He's been in a whole lot of other bands that just were you know, like we're not hearing him um, as an artist, and you know, like I said, missed out. Okay. Thanks. I didn't know this was your project. Based, I thought it was his for some reason. No, well, no we both started. He, right on. Or, yeah. Originally, it was a, it, they approached me because I'm in uh, Death in Motion okay. team as well. I, I'm one of the, the vocal pairs, and uh, originally him and uh, Jason Hines, they were Jason. in, in well, bipolar at the time. Ah, bipolar. Uh, and uh, shout out to bipolar. Yeah, shout out to Tom the bassist who's not in the band anymore. Charlie, I they, sold him furniture. <laughs> they they had, they had approached me about singing and I said no I suck and uh, I'm uh, singing currently but yeah, I suck <laughs> yeah. well I mean I'm more of like a you know I don't do as much in that I have never written like a full song myself you right. know and uh, I said but I want to hear the material and they sent me with Nova, you know, Nova mm-hmm. and I said all right I. I will. I will try and write a demo for this, mm-hmm. and I wrote a shitty ass demo, and I sent it to them, and they were like, "No, we can totally hear what you're going for." So let's, you know, yeah. let's do this. And uh, you know, we met up with uh, Glenn. Uh, there was no basis at the time, but and we jammed. Um, and then he he was just he had a schedule at the time that you know wasn't matching, and and uh, it's frustrating at the moment. So Kevin was like. No, this isn't gonna work. And then I went to Kevin and I was I like, can't work with this. We had already written, you know, like we had already started working stuff. He had sent me other demos, and I was like, let's let's keep up. writing, and then we can build a lineup. Yeah. And that's what we did. And uh, you know, we got Nor, and we fucking you know brought Oscar, and then Glenn, you know, was now more available. So right, yeah, um, yeah like so technically, yeah, Kevin, Kevin was the. The the breeder of all this, yeah. So uh, <laughs> he's a breeder. So and, and, I, I got to give you props know. too, man. Like for being a first band, you know, being an actual front man and all that. You know, like, you came yeah. a long way. Like yeah, from his first demo, probably say this, yeah. I, I have like, to think yeah, that's all. I went to Kevin at first. Yeah, I, mean, I was like, you know, I, I have short car for the love fest in here. I, I have <laughs> to say, well, I mean, outside of the band that uh, you, know, my boy Aaron from Aaron Jim and I has been he worked with me like a lot. He showed me right. a bunch of things that I'd never done like warm up wise. And then, you know, he worked with me on the vocal production. So it was just like, it was like watching it, it happen in, in real time is the way that he grew nice. uh, it, inside of like six months. Everybody that I know that, that, you know, has seen him been like, and Carver really stepped up, didn't he? I'm like, I, 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 I <laughs> Who knew? You know what I'm saying? But like, we worked hard and fucking, it's it's amazing. You know? But uh, uh, thank you, Aaron. It, it was it was just like a, a I never heard like Kevin's actual material beyond what mm-hmm. he'd been doing with other bands. Mm-hmm. And you know, I mean, to their credit, like they they utilized him, but they didn't utilize him. Right. Um, and then we had to have a guitarist that you know could keep up and was comparable, and we got yeah. more. And so it's it, you know just. We found yeah, North, definitely. I'll say Nor and the Glenn. They they have a major impact on the band too. <clears throat> you were at that Sabres. What? You were at that Sabres. No, <laughs> you were, you were looking at the little kitty cat. Big lights. All right. Well, we 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 what are you talking about? Moving on. We threw a bag over his head. In the interest of time. Um. So, anybody else got a favorite venue? Backstage, Fremont, considering the Black Dahlia show was fucking awesome. Right, yeah. yeah. That, that's, awesome. that's a cool venue. Uh, what I'd like to get yeah, us to yeah. is the House of Blues, though. I'll tell you, I, I, I performed in right. the House of Blues. Yeah, I've done sure. rock on the House of Blues. It's amazing. You've got a sound yeah. person up front, you've got a sound person stage yeah. left, and they communicate, and you hear everything, yeah. and they hear everything, and it's amazing. Um, my only 
uh, my only memory of that that I was like, man, that's a shame, was that the drum riser, because I was playing guitar and singing, you know, we're a three-piece, so mm -hmm. I'm a front man playing guitar, and I wanted to do that thing where you, like, stand on the drum riser, but it's, like, this high, <laughs> so I'm like, nope, I just kind of push myself off and keep going. <laughs> I was just like, oh, man, another six inches down, I would have had that, I would have had that, and could have had that moment. Because pictures, but anyway. Vamped is also awesome. Yes, uh, Vamped, bear in mind with Vamped, it's heavy kick drum, heavy bass, but that's what, you know, that's what the, the crowd wants. Um, I found the sweet spot. The sweet spot is either straight in the middle of the crowd or standing against the subwoofer. Suddenly yeah. you can hear vocals. Hey! <laughs> so, Vamped, I love you, but... Maybe just kill I love the staging. Back up. There. But yeah, no, they, 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 they really take your take their time, you know, setting up yep. the levels on the they got the lighting monitors and everything. Yeah. Like. And and they have an actual curtain. No, mm -hmm. granted, you got yeah. a guy who's pulling the curtain. Yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you know <laughs> maybe, shout, shout out, out to that guy. Yeah, yeah shout out to that guy. Like the, the sound guy. guy. The sound guy pulls the curtain. He's, he's better. But um uh I mentioned Tyrants by Night. I, I did a review of them right here. And I showed uh how they before they the curtain opened. They were playing. It's like they, they did the whole bombastic, and as soon as the curtain got pulled, boom! Lights. They they hit the downbeat. Everyone went nuts, myself yeah. included. I was just like, "That's how you do it." Yeah, and I, yeah. I'm I'm totally agree. now House of Blues doesn't have a stage, a curtain. Do they? they do have a curtain. Do they? Yes, they do. I never use it though. I, yes, I've yes, never seen it. <laughs> I've seen it for the uh, big for the big boys. For when we did uh, the Death in Motion ten year anniversary, um, we used the curtain you know, for for us. And then so uh, you just had to ask. Huh? You have to ask. One? Well, and then uh, one time <laughs> I saw uh, bipolar when they had a different guitarist at the time. Uh, the uh, apparently there was a, a battle between the backstage <laughs> and 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 the band. No, was like a and uh, <laughs> they uh, they pulled the curtain on them because they were going over. It was ah, hilarious. They did the old the it hook. Was, the hook. It was funny. Matthew Wickenson. <laughs> it, keeps, it keeps opening up and pushing the cord, so I keep pushing it down. No, it's fine. Technology! I have one of those. What's going on over there? I have one of those magic trash cans, and he's standing right in front of it. And if, if it's, 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 trying, it's trying to eat my yeah. balls. It's yeah. Crazy. yeah. yeah. Sorry, sorry. Right. Let it eat your balls, bro. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, that's what I should have did. I should have just started garbage. fucking moaning. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, says my wife. What is your garbage smelling? Like? <laughs> it hurts. <laughs> it hurts. <laughs> oh, well, never mind. Well, so, it's a feisty one. Huh? <laughs> no, it's fine. There's a, if What's I really wrong, wanted to, there's bro? a switch I could. You come off. home with me. Oh, yes. okay. uh, so, uh, from favorite venue, everybody do favorite venue? Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Cool. Right. cool. Well, uh, our last show over at the um, Whiskey Go Go. I mean, even though it's kind of a shitty place to play, but it's I've just heard mixed for, reviews. <laughs> but like for how it's legendary the business it is. model, yes, it's the business model. Yeah, for I how just, legendary yeah, it is, yes, you know, I, I just has so the last band I had on it, here, Hades yeah. Hand, was like, "Hey, management, let's get go go. Maybe don't be a dick to fans." Hey. <laughs> but other than that, it's famous because of who played there. It's not famous for the venue, right? Yeah, and exactly. you know, whereas exactly. places like House Blues and and Vamped, and they're famous because. They are putting music forward first. Mm -hmm. It's not a gaming bar that also has a stage. Uh, not that Whiskey A Go goes that way. Of course, Whiskey A Go Go is building on their history, but mm -hmm. um, I would love to play there with a better, a better. I think I like, think lineup, better lineup. Yeah. yeah, better lineup. I think the whole that wasn't, yeah. it wasn't very fitting. Was, right. Yeah. Not not saying that the bands on the, the lineup. Yeah. Were no, 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 no. Fine. Yeah, the band's just, fine. It wasn't our. Oh, our crowd. believe me, we've all had that show yeah. where like a guy on acoustic opens up. And then there's a country band, and then, and then metal yeah. with makeup. <laughs> it, you know, <laughs> it just—it wasn't our lineup. So. Yeah, it, it, that's a promoter's fault. Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. You know, yeah. I, I, I promoters. Think, I think the the problems that that we experienced there yeah. were strictly having to do with the, <clears throat> the you know the not the promoter per se, but just how, like the whole show, right? In general, uh, but um, fucking played with like the greats. Right. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, you're in there with, you know, I'm saying like when you're at, at any point in time, when you're inside there, you can, you know, always fantasize about who was. Well, right the thing here. is, celebrities do still pop in there. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, mm -hmm. just because of where it is. But these bands played there. 
Yeah. We're Last sure. year, Kiss yeah, performed over there. Yeah, that was crazy. A big band. Frank Zappa. I wonder how many times people have, have singers have, have just done the whole back to the audience thing just because of Jim Morrison. It's like, okay, dude, we get it. Uh-huh, come on. Well, Tool does it because of the other thing, right? See, no, that, just in, that being said, I really don't care for that stuff. I'd rather play floor shows with more people that care about us and respect us yeah. ten times more than right. any big stage, right. honestly. Um, he's on, yeah, he's there. yeah, so... <laughs> <laughs> You're young. You have it now. Wow. I, I, I don't know, man. I mean, I'm over. <laughs> that's a running joke. It would make sense that the older you get, the less bullshit you'd want to deal with. You're, so, you're I mean, 23? I'm 23, yeah. I'm over half, you're, I'm over half your age. I'm, I'm over half twice your age, I mean. I'm, I'm over half your age. Well, I was doing the math myself. <laughs> yeah. I was like, wait a minute. Half, <laughs> minus two. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> we're the fractions. We're Charter, the, from favorite venue <laughs> to... Dream show. What's what's the dream show? Oh. Whether with a band or on a tour or just we want to play the moon. Team all the no, uh, <laughs> no. The moon. <laughs> we want to play on the moon. Yeah, but you can't play your guitar on the moon because there's no air on the. God damn it! I want to no. play on top of the Playboy. Shout out to Amazing. Toast and Nacho. Super happy fun time extravaganza. <laughs> what you guys had broken up anyway? Playboy uh, Mansion with my wife. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> What, she can't get in on it? No, no. I just, <laughs> nobody has ever said, like, I want to play the Playboy Mansion. I want to play ads. You, like, you said dream shows, bro. Dream yeah. shows. We're talking Go dance. for it. We're talking ridiculous. Well, it won't be the same without Hef, though. <clears throat> I mean, I wasn't going to be really concerned about where he was. You know what I mean? I'm just saying. Anyway. Like, part of the, the Playboy Mansion thing is you meet Hef. He's still there. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> in, in, in spirit. Anyway. There, there, there's socks everywhere, I'm sure. I don't know, dude. Wow. Uh, uh, pretty sure crusty there's socks. Crusty, yeah. Yeah. crusty there's, socks everywhere. I'm sure, a, I'm sure he's there. A Viagra latent ghost hanging around. <laughs> I think, uh, I think. He's stiff. Alright, seriously. Though. you know what? I'm probably, I'm probably, that's probably too far fetched. So I guess. Like the Bunny Ranch or whatever. It's like. <laughs> yeah. He said dream show. <laughs> no, wait. Correct me if I'm wrong. Dennis, With my wife. Dennis Hoff died, right? Dennis Maybe, Hoffman? Yeah. yeah Hoffman, he, yeah. He died. Yeah. Right? Not Dennis Hoff died. The, the proprietor of the Bunny Ranch yeah. who was like running for office. He died, right? Oh, I don't know. Good, because fuck that guy. Yeah. Anyway. He was <laughs> Um... <laughs> <laughs> Who hurt you? <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. No um, taxation without re- representation. I think Download Fest, really Soundwave, <laughs> um, maybe UK Tech Fest, even though we want to fit on that. But those oh, are, those those are nice. Of, it'd be awesome. Yeah. I'd love to play uh, like Glastonbury. As, as far as local, local yeah, festivals, Lost Rages, Extreme Thing, and Psycho Fest are probably you know yeah. something yeah. we're aiming for. Something. As far as dream shows, dream festivals. I think Download, Rockstar, and Soundwave are like some of the biggest yeah. festivals for our genre. Right? That that we'd want to be on because exposure would be fucking ridiculous, dude. Ozfest, yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, I see. Now you just sound well, like they do not, Ozfest, they do the Ozfest is still Ozfest like in our range, you know? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, just because of who they are, I'd, I'd love to do something with Food Fighters. I know. Fucking I, hell, fuck yeah, man. I, I I know faithful viewers have seen heard me talk ad nauseum about Foo Fighters, Dave Grohl, blah blah blah. But honestly, I mean, any you, band that hears, oh, West Baptist Church is down the street, we're gonna fucking rickroll them in a truck wearing underwear. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's like they're never going. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> don't sue me. Don't sue me. Don't let you turn around. Hurt you. Let's move on. <laughs> To gear. Ooh. Yes, the drummers always love the so gear. Real gear sexy, real quick. So we'll start with you and get you out of the way. Okay. Shout out to Schechter. Um, first, Schechter. are you stars? No, not yet. Okay, second. Get on that. No, so, um, the second. <laughs> what current gear are you rocking at, at shows as opposed to in the studio? As far as I'm rocking, um, man, I I almost play a different guitar every show <laughs> at this <laughs> point. Um, <laughs> The Schecter KM7s have been what I've been playing because they're so reliable and they sound amazing. Um, as far as my rig, um, I have a Line 6 HD Pro going into a QSC power amp into a Carbon 412, and that's it. Nice. I'm rocking the hell out of that shit. That's the day you brought a Carvel uh, acoustic guitar, right? Yes, I did. Yeah. Which, when you see this, it's a pretty thing. It's very beautiful. It's guitar. got a little thing on it I've never seen before on the neck, and so I thought, oh, that's kind of nice. I don't, it probably doesn't affect the sound. Are you talking about those extra two frets? 
Is that are they are they literal <laughs> playable friends? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You, do you play them? No, not yet. No, <laughs> I'm just like you get up to the they're dog. They're there though. They're making, well. up to they're making dogs freak I, I, out. I'm they're so saying, you know, it's yeah. not like you can ever tune in an acoustic guitar correctly. So I don't know how much I'd care about using the frets all the way up there, but. Yeah, they're there. If I want them, although I mean, if you could use it to where it yeah. made sense in a song, somebody listening who knows what they're doing would be like, "How oh, was that note?" Oh, uh, <laughs> I would use them. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Next. Yeah. So re uh, recently, I just got this uh, Ormsby guitar. It's a seven string fan fret. It's a phenomenal guitar. Just the way it plays and feels. Where are they from? Do you know? Uh, Australia. Right, I've mm -hmm. never heard of them. So that's why I asked. Australia, yeah. fucking sick, dude. And I talked so to you. You gotta play guitar. upside down because anyway, nah. like, plus a headstock of it, it just looks crazy, it's like insane. <laughs> it's he, like a harpoon. He it's traded like a, a Kiesel for it. Nice, yeah. yeah. That's, that's I mean, how that's, that's that worth. Is. That's worth trading for sure. No, you didn't bring uh, that today, though. Oh uh, no, because that's electric. <laughs> so yeah, what'd you bring today? Oh, it's uh, a Seagull acoustic guitar. Nice. Yeah, that's awesome. I haven't heard that name in a while. Yeah, it's pretty cool. cool. Uh, for uh, the rig, just recently got into a more digital area. So I'm using a, a Line 6 a HD Pod 500, which is more reliable. Like uh, before, I was using a Mesa Boogie uh, EVH to that. Sorry. Sorry. So yeah. Like back then, I was getting so much technical difficulties, you know, using all analog. Oh, two so minutes of pain. Yeah. Ass. With all the cables, like. Mm -hmm. Kind of now and stuff like that. That's so that's, yeah. Did you know the way to go when it comes to it's like yeah, yeah, I sure. We should mention uh, though that like he, uh, he, he, said he was having technical. He used uh, what did you use for tubes? You used a uh, six five hundred five. Yes, six five hundred five. Fifty one fifty EVH. The fifty watt, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, Mesa Boogie rectifier too. I use the sixty five hundred five, and I have a Randall Diablo one hundred, and you know those mm -hmm. rip hard, man. I don't know, I might use them for cattle decapitation, that might be pretty okay. sick. Okay. Nice, sounds expensive. <laughs> <laughs> they oh, rip yeah. fucking hard, man, they're All good. Right. All right, uh, expensive. how about you? Huh? No, you. <laughs> oh, Jesus, <laughs> shut up. Um, Stop molesting my trash can. The <laughs> 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 trash can just opened his mouth. <laughs> Shit, he went there. Play it again. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Here. It's gonna take no, it. What the fuck? fuck? There you go. Which one you want the crowd to do? Open it up wide. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. That's not imaginary. I killed the beast. It's all right. So, um, what beer are you rocking right now? Um, try to keep it under a half hour. <laughs> I'm playing a. Um, it doesn't matter. doesn't know. <laughs> Maybe oh. it's Orion series. That's it. Come on. No, that, that, that really is it. A Mapex? Mapex. I thought it was Mapex. Oh, yeah. So it's, the drum set that you're playing that has the uh, rap on it. It's called the God Set. The God Set. So he has a very uh, religious uh, vinyl rap around his drum set. Come on, how many Mapex kits do you own? Orion, you said? It's rap. How many kits do you own? Just, just one. Really? Yeah. Some old drummers had like a kit in the living room to eat off of. There's the kit in the bathroom for when I get inspiration. This kit has survived crossing the country and me going to prison twice. Like has come back to me. Wow. Where where everybody like everything else that I had mm -hmm. was stolen and you know. It's a real sentimental value. So he's lending the uh, street cred to the band. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, th this shit's real. If y'all. Don't want to know about it. Come, come see me. I'll tell you all about. <laughs> no, seriously though, um, I'm surprised only one kit. Quite frankly, but good on you. Um, it it it, it was twenty six hundred for. Okay, <laughs> that that explains it. <laughs> you just went all, through all the shells. Yep. This is back in nineteen ninety eight. Okay. That's when I got it. That's when I ordered it. Um, it is the. Um, equivalent to a pro masters or like the highest of the the Tama. I don't know. It's made by Tama, basically. You know, th those two guys they split up or whatever, and then had the two different companies. But um, how many pieces is the entire kit? Um, it was a six piece. Now it's a five piece or okay. four piece, depending on the show. I don't know. Yeah. 
Cool. So it's, it's, it's purpose built. It's not. I'm gonna just in case I do a cocktail, you know, thing. It's no, 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 you no, don't no, have no. a whole bunch of different kids. <laughs> when you play it, uh, when you play out, you, you know, uh, you, you realize that less is more. You know, and especially for setup and breakdown. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you and have the original snare with that kid? Ultimately, you could do, you know, if you can rock less and make it sound like more, then that's 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 the goal. I think. Right on. Um, the original snare is not with me anymore. Um, I didn't really like ever use it then because I used the, <clears throat> like a, I use a higher end snare. Or when I say higher end, I mean like higher pitch, piccolo area, right kind of snare. So you, so you have two four knobs, or you have three racks? No, no, it it it, it was three racks, and I think the the third one didn't make it from the one of the. So you're currently at a four series. piece or a five piece? Because I'm I'm trying yes. to. In my head, I'm counting four pieces. I know. Don't count because you're not good at it. All right. <laughs> That's why he's the drummer. <laughs> okay. How about how about you? What are you rocking for your mic and setup? Um, I, what a vase! <laughs> I, um, it's been like 45 minutes, dude. I mean, you, live or recording? Live. Live. Um, because recording, I own, we all get into like. I own a sure mic. I, sure, sure. Nothing is, wrong. Sure, I can yeah, buy it. I'm. I think they're they're liable, so that's what I use. Right on. And they're, I mean, Sennheisers are nice, but Shure is a little bit better so, price point if you're PG fifty eight, I believe. Yeah, I love it. Sure, I, I I think I've got an SG fifty eight, but I I've, I've got a fifty eight. Uh, of course, got a couple of fifty sevens for the recording stuff. But yeah. I have an FM seven uh, SM nice. seven B for my my, my my current pride and joy because I sing in a jazz band, Jerry Martinis, um, is. A sure of 55 Dirty Sanchez. No, that's not what he said. That's not what he said. I already have a mustache. I couldn't help but think about. But it's a, it's a sure 55 SH, which is that vintage looking one. Yeah. That uh, still sounds like it's 58. Yeah. It's basically a 58 uh, side. Um, I'm so happy because if you're singing a jazz band, it's the look. You got the thing. You right, know? right. Mm -hmm. um, they, there's even people that make, you can buy them, I think, eBay. The, the old school little like call letters on the top of your mic. Nice. So I'm thinking, of, hmm, what the dirty martinis is a bit long, right? What could I do? Maybe if they can get like an image of, of a martini glass, that might work. But anywho, um, I can help you with that. We have good news, guys. Two more questions, then we're gonna get some music from the highs of your current gear to the lows of losing gear. Anybody ever lose gear? I oh, have yeah. not personally. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> I have not personally. <laughs> he, he has, his PTSD face right now. <laughs> Boy, we lost him here. Oh He's, wow. Ah, 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 Get him! Get him! Somebody's at the door. Please hold. Get him! Oh, it's not the FBI, but let's just. We're back, and Calvin, being responsible, is going to not do a shot with us. We're going to do a shot of bourbon here. And then we're going to answer one more question and get them up in front of the guitar wall. Gentlemen, to music. Cheers. Cheers. Clink, 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 clunk. <laughs> Brian was one, 2019. Oh, yes. <laughs> Roy. It's, that first one is always just so like... <laughs> Wake up! Yeah, right. Prior was one 20 or 19 year old. <laughs> There's a joke, but I'm not going to say it because it's my channel. So, anyway, <laughs> last one. Faithful viewers know it's coming. Pretend you're talking to a new musician. Maybe it's their first gig, first band, whatever. What is one maintenance tip you would give them that you wish somebody had told you? Don't take it seriously. <clears throat> Don't take anybody in your band too seriously. Don't take your music that seriously. Try to have it, yeah. as much fun as possible. And Try to do it your best. When it gets weird, but yeah, take a break. Yeah, I agree. And that's something I had to learn a lot. It's definitely take your time, find your sound. You know, practice your instrument too. Write down scales. Practice <laughs> with metronome. Metronome. And you know, take care of your instrument too. Yep. Get yeah, it. Change your strings. All that. A lot more what than did I tell you? <laughs> Hey, you, you know that was coming. <laughs> if you're a vocalist, warm up your voice before every show. I didn't do it for years and years mm -hmm. and years, and now I understand the importance of it. Right. Don't don't be three songs into your set or an hour into your record, you know, your recording session, 
and now your voice is just warmed up. Just take the time, mm-hmm. 15, 20 minutes, run through your range, you know, just just do it. Get your voice nice and warm so that yep. everything just... Mm. I'm going to piggyback on that. It's just like your instrument. Um, a lot of guitarists know and drums. You set it up, you let it acclimate to the room or to the, the environment because outside, inside, heat, air conditioning, whatever, you got to let it kind of get to where... It, you're used, it's going to sound like you want it to sound. Same with the vocals. Practice, maybe some tea with honey or whatever. If you're recording, yeah. yeah. Tea, yeah. Um, tea the whole time. We've all heard... Stay away from dairy a few hours before. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, we've all heard people, you know, singers, especially that we associate with our child, like Death Leopard or, you know, one of those bands where they were always going high or they were always going hard. And now when you hear them, they're not hitting those notes because they didn't. Yeah, they really they pushed it too hard. Plus the partying. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, how about you? Elbows and elbows. <clears throat> my, my I man. agree with Calvin and say warming up. Whether you're a drummer, vocalist, or guitarist is always super important. So mm-hmm. that's definitely something not to neglect. If you're playing in a rock band, kind of like how we are, even though we're rock, it's progressive. Practice stuff that's harder than what you play. It just helps you progress as a right. musician, you know. You mean more yeah. difficult, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah, because I, I practice sweeps time. and I, I, you know, know how to do a lot of different mm-hmm. techniques that I don't use in the span because I, I don't force it, you know. But right. I know how to do the, you know. Well, we both do the little little bit of thumping, you know. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about. Yep. <laughs> oh, I know what you're talking about, big guy. Yeah. <laughs> and we're right back into it. All right. All right. Um, uh, how the hell do you always catch me off guard with that shit? <laughs> Let me introduce you to somebody. This is <laughs> thank you very much, guys. And thank you for hanging in there and, enjoy- and watching this. I hope you enjoyed. Give us a second. We're going to go up to the mu- guitar wall, and you're going to hear some music from Pariah Was One. Ba da ba ba da ba. Freezing. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
thank Karaya was one for coming by. It was a great interview and a great performance. You can check out more of their stuff in the links down below. And make sure you get their CD. It's awesome. I'll be doing a review of it in a separate video. If you'd like to support the content you like, please consider clicking my Patreon link down below or uh, buy a CD of my own. In the meantime, if you want to hear more from Pariah Was One, click here. If you want to subscribe, click here. Remember to be amazing, and we'll see you next time on Room 6. Say bye, guys. Later. Later.